In this video, Grandad and I are going on an epic road trip. The plan is to travel from Suffolk to Dartmoor, then to Wales and back again. And along the way, we're going to have some good times and spend some quality time together. Lads and Grandad's tour. Oi, oi! <laughs> You looking forward to it? Road trip? Yeah. We're going to uh, heading for Exeter at the moment. Yeah, we can find it in the mist. Somewhere anywhere is travels with my grandfather. Now that we're fully fueled up and on the motorways, it's my turn to take the wheel. Now I just turned onto the M25. It looks like we're in for maybe a little bit of rain here. If it is mucky out at Dartmoor, at least it'll be nice and spooky. So on our way down to Exeter, Granddad and I took a quick detour via um, a local historical landmark, would you say? Yeah, you would. They were as old as the pyramid, do Something like that, yeah. I suppose you're allowed to go inside and have a closer look. I think they were saying on QI that it's got a percussive quality to it, like giant drums. It does kind of make you want to go inside and play closer with it, doesn't it? What do you reckon the stone ends then, Grandad? Oh. <laughs> it's alright. Bunch of stones stacked up. That's a bit expensive, I think. <laughs> that's one of the stones. I suppose that's how they think that they must have been able to move them by putting them on sort of sleds and then logs down to drag them with. Don't think the solar panel is supposed to be there, though. Could you move the sarsen stone? Hmm? Nope. I didn't even get one. Didn't even register one single person on that. That was a nice little detour. Should we head back on the road again? Eventually, after a long day of driving, we ended up in a little caravan park just outside of Torquay. Good news, we managed to find the campsite. Oh, you can see a few stars out. Oh, goodness gracious. Whose idea was Dartmoor? <laughs> it's cold and windy. I've been missold, I think. I was expecting tropical beaches and white sand. Driving around the van so far seems like it's been a lot of fun. I mean, it's been difficult to drive down some of those little country lanes and things, but compared to having a house on wheels, instead of paying for a hotel everywhere you go, it's been difficult to argue with. Why not, Grandad? Oh. Morning, everyone. Day two of our van tour. Last night, Grandad had this genius idea. What he did was he got his phone, downloaded a few Hound of the Baskerville sounds onto it, played them during my sleep, which is strange because I had this weird dream last night. Still, no harm done. <laughs> Grandad's just packing up the cable. Might be almost time to head off. 
Dartmoor. It is 10 past eight in the morning. It's just as well we're down from Torquay. You, you can, can see the sea. It's, it's over there, there between, between the, the land and the, and the sky. sky. Just. Excited to go, Greta. You excited to go? Yeah. Yeah, we're ready to go. Awesome, let's go. As long as we want, back around there, and then we'll be right to get on the main road to go off the wheels. Seems straightforward enough. There we go. All right, Dartmoor, here we come. This is us just now coming out the top end of Torquay, which is where that famous hotel is. Very famous hotel. Just crossing the river. The River Dart at Holm Bridge. On our way to Princeton. And the bridge is this beautiful little stone wall. Old Stone Bridge. That was easy. Hello. Oh. 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 <laughs> I can hear you in, man. The setting is a worthy one. The devil did desire to have a hand in the affairs of men quote from Sherlock Holmes. This is the first time I ever read Sherlock Holmes. I knew I wanted to come and see Dartmoor. Such a wild and otherworldly place. It's incredible. You can imagine such a place spawn such a mysterious and spooky tale as the Hound of the Baskervilles. Imagine Henry Baskerville walking across this at night, getting chased by the Hellhound. <laughs> now, yes, I realize that all of these stories are fictional, but they're absolutely incredible. <laughs> it's the only reason that I'm actually here to see it. I think that's still to this day going to be one of my favorite books is The Hand of the Baskervilles. Must have read it like 15 times or so. <sighs> so, Grandin and I are going for a little bit of a walk. Uh, out to this big tour. It's absolutely fantastic. It's so boggy and lush and wild. My granddad's leaving me in the dust. He's off like a shot. Look at him. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes He's around here somewhere Keep going around and spotting them in the distance, just going around the next corner. Fantastic place, the moor. You never tire of it, it's ever changing. I think it was Stapleton that said that. It's a wonderful place, the moor. Absolutely. Really, you never tire of it. It's so changeable. Down. He's 84, you know. If a fallen hurts something now, it'll be funny because it'll make it onto the bloopers reel. No problem. Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground Rain. I get that. It's called the Clapper Bridge. It's quite deep actually, I wouldn't want to fall in. Great big slabs of granite on big granite slab pylons. 
cross the river with. You know, I really like it. Keep on coming across little pieces like this all the way across Dartmoor. And there's not hundreds of tourists all sitting around all taking pictures of it. And there's not a little gift shop selling branded toffees and little miniatures and snow globes and things. They're just here. What do you think, Grandad? Better than Stonehenge? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it didn't cost <laughs> as much to get into a Stonehenge, did it? No, no, no. <laughs> Farewell Dartmoor. It's a fantastic flying visit, but I really thoroughly enjoyed it. What do you think of Dartmoor, Grandad? All right, nice. Nice. I think that that's. Not so nice when it rain out, though. What was your favourite bit? Um, I don't know. It was a wall of keep. <laughs> <laughs> That's us just now entered my 13th country, Wales. Well, no, because we didn't keep left, do we, don't think? No. I think the first traffic lights, I don't think they were counting them, do you? So I don't think we'll find it. We had a little bit of difficulty trying to find the campsite at Cardiff, so we then decided to go with plan B, Barry. I also really wanted to see Barry because it's one of the filming locations for the hit TV show Gavin and Stacey. It looks like I'm having no luck with the Welsh chapter of this trip. The only way we could find Barry is fully booked because it's the weekend and now it looks like we're going to head back out to Newport. It's a shame really. At least we got to set foot in Wales. Oh. <sighs> now I got to set foot in Wales. I wanted to have a look around Barry, I wanted to look okay. around Cardiff, I'm not getting either now. Oh well, onwards to Newport then. Eventually plan C is to find a campsite in Newport. That says Araf, that does. I reckon that means slow. Ain't half slow as well, isn't it? That is slow. Don't seem to be getting nowhere fast, we don't. Oh, I'm going to stall the van again if I'm not careful. After a long and very eventful day, we set up the caravan, had our dinner, and Grandad then taught me how to play German whist. I go. So this is the very efficient way Grandad's got for deploying the bed system. Bed required, sir. Bed's <laughs> made. I quite like that. Matching silk pajamas now, huh? <laughs> this is how you can slip into your sleeping bag nice and smooth in the silk pajamas. Yeah, and you can turn around without like getting stuck sort of thing. Yeah. Right, who's for the dance party first? I'll go first. Run. Who's for the dance dance, dance battle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grandad then told me a hilarious story about the time when he and Grandma went river swimming and he accidentally lost his trousers and his credit cards when he left them behind on the bank. <laughs> and luckily, a good Samaritan handed in his trousers and credit card at a local police station. And some trousers. <laughs> Strategy meeting now, We're trying to work out the best way to go back. Day three's plan is to head up north and pass just under Birmingham right. on our way back around to Suffolk. Looks like going to Birmingham. Looks like that's the best way to go. Got everything all stowed and ready to go in here, except for the chocolate biscuits. Well, it was a very flying visit to Wales, I'm afraid, but suppose it was just not meant to be. However, that's one of the problems of traveling on a tight schedule, though, really, isn't it? Gotta be in Scotland tomorrow afternoon. Right. Before I sleep, hear the 
I understood all you were saying when you told me your story last night. This morning you're going, you have to get up, get up, get up, get up, again. <laughs> Granddad can't understand what I say unless I talk slowly. I don't think a lot of people can understand what I say unless I talk slowly. Well, you know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. You and I well, that's us now over in England. Fairly well, Wales. That was a passing visit, wasn't it? I get to spend any time there, go for a walk or anything. We've now just crossed over to Herefordshire. Just in time to try another UK classic, the Cornish pasty. Never had one before. Definitely smells good. It smells strong oniony. Mmm. Mmm. I like that. Job <laughs> that went in mine and not yours. What did you put in it? Fruit juice. <laughs> Granny just put fruit juice in this tea. What do you think? All right. Mm hmm. We're now on the M42, just south of Birmingham. All right, Birmingham. All right. Before long, we find ourselves back in familiar territory, home in Suffolk. Stuffing up on our way home, we went to the Suffolk Wildlife Trust Bird Reserve. And here we observe Grandad Sherman, also known as Jack Sherman, in his natural habitat, watching birds. <laughs> Not satisfied with his original viewing platform, the Grandad Sherman goes for another viewing location. You come down this way often, Grandad? Yeah, I come here for fairly often now. Four or five times a year, I suppose. I'm assuming that the birds constantly change with the seasons they as well. It seems a long way though when you're all alone. Yeah. That's nice to have a bit of company, isn't it? You can see the fire when you come to talk to you. We did kind of go around the long way via Dartmoor and Cardiff, didn't we? This is Grandad's biggest hobby, this is ornithology. As our epic adventure comes to an end, I reflect upon how lucky I am to get to spend this time with my granddad. How we got to make so many new memories and share in so many experiences that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. We're going to our head and back.